Good morning. Uh, my name is Daryl Windham. I'm horticulture manager here at Naples Zoo and Caribbean Gardens. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I have a degree in ornamental horticulture and landscape technology. Um, I've been doing uh, horticulture work for 25 years um, and 20 years, the past 20 years of that has been spent um, in the zoo industry. Uh, I've been here at uh, Caribbean Gardens for five years and prior to that I was at uh, Zoo Atlanta for uh, about 20 years of that. So, um, wanted to give you a really special talk today and some information in honor of Palm Sunday. Uh, we're going to highlight some of our unique palm specimens that we have in our collection and just give you some really cool interesting facts about palm trees. So uh, there are just uh, some stats about palm trees. There's around 2,600 species of palms uh, in the world. They inhabit all kinds of ecosystems and ecotypes. Uh, you can find them from mangroves, uh, all the way up to deserts, to mountains, to rainforest, uh, everywhere in between. They occur on all every continent except for Antarctica. Uh, some unique uh, palm world records um, that uh, they hold in the plant kingdom. Um, they have the they hold the world's largest flower structure, so it's inflorescence, and that belongs to the genus Caripa. There's several species uh, in that genus. But the flower, you're talking about a flower spike that gets probably 20 feet tall, 20 feet wide, and has millions of flowers. Um, when a plant dedicates that much energy into blooming, that means uh, it's called monocarpic. And that means after they plant, the mother plant flowers, sets seed and produces the seed and drops the seed, the plant actually dies. So these palms will grow for 50, 60, 70, 80 years, depending on where they're grown before they die. So uh, another uh, interesting uh, fact about uh, palms is the, uh, they have the world's largest seed. Um, comes from uh, the double coconut or coco de mer um, from, the, uh, from the Seychelles Islands. Um, gets approximately like 20 kilograms, I think is what the, the average size is. And you're talking something that's 18 inches by 18 inches. So it's a large, large nut produced on that tree. Um, and then the other world record that the uh, palm trees have is uh, they produce the world's longest or largest fruit, uh, leaf. And that belongs to Raphia regalis uh, from Central Africa. And these leaves can get 75, 80 feet long and up to 10 feet wide. So those are some of the unique facts, uh, world records that palm trees have. Um, if you're familiar with palm trees, you know there's a lot of products that come from palm trees, like roof thatching, so on and so forth. Our native thatch palm here is used for thatching uh, for cheeky huts and so on. Um, there's also coconut. Everybody's familiar with coconut. Uh, it's one of the more tropical uh, palms that you can get out there when everybody thinks tropics and they're going to the trop a tropical beach, they're thinking coconut. So coconut's another one. Um, if you've got wicker furniture or rattan furniture, in your house that comes actually from uh, the stems of a vining uh, palm tree from Southeast Asia called rattan palms. Um, so products, palm products are utilized by everybody in all forms. Uh, you can make drinks from them, you can do all kinds of stuff. Um, so anyway, I just want to talk a little bit more about some of our unique specimens that we like here and are trialing here in our gardens. Um, so first off, uh, this is really, really interesting palm right here. Uh, it's uh, called uh, the dwarf beetle nut or Arika uh, catechu. And this is a dwarf version of it. You see how stunted and kind of um, really compact these, these leaves are. This tree would normally make a fast growing palm tree that would get like 40 or 50 feet tall. And this thing right here is probably max out here, hopefully around 15 to 20 feet tall, but that's gonna be years down the line. Um, really, really interesting tree. We're just try we're trialing it here. Um, get a lot of comments on it. People will think it's just a really interesting palm, so we're happy to kind of grow this. Um, it's a naturally occurring uh, dwarf version of it um, that people have selected from Southeast Asia. So it's widely grown as a, a staple crop in Southeast Asia. And in this particular, it just happens to be a dwarf form, which is kind of a unique horticulture trait. Other tree uh, right here next to it that I want to talk about is uh, this is a Tychosperma sheferi uh, or sheffer, sol sheffer sol solitaire palm. Um, it is related to uh, the solitaire palm that we grow here in South Southwest Florida. It's very common. Um, this particular one is a really, really pretty clumping palm tree. So uh, 
if you're familiar with like areca palms that we have here that's very common in the landscape, this could be a, another uh, possible substitute for use. Um, and, it, and you're finding it more and more available in the trade. Um, so hopefully you should find some of these around if you want to get some. Um, you can just look around online. There's a lot of different resources where you can find um, find these, uh, this information about some of these things. So it comes from Southeast Asia and Papua New Guinea. And um, yeah, it's one of the it's a it's a winter for us. We really really like it. It's very small, well not small, but it's a much more manageable, compact uh, plant. And then the next one I wanted to point out over here. It's this tall one behind those gingers here. Um, that's Areca macrocalyx marie, um, also called the the Highland beetle nut palm. Uh, when it uh, drops off a new leaf, it produces a it has a red leaf uh, scar or crown shaft underneath it that's really really colorful. Um, sometimes it's really bright red, sometimes it's mauve, sometimes it's a uh, pinkish green, so it's very variable, um, but we're happy with it. It's been a fast grower for us. The one thing is it is what uh, a little on the cold sensitive side, so we do have to kind of watch uh, if it gets down to temperatures, but so far we have really haven't had a, a winter to test it. Um, other than getting down into the mid 30s and it's it's handled it fantastically so we're really really happy with it um again that's the highland beetle nut palm areca macrocalyx a little more of a collector's palm again you'll be able to find these at certain growers um either online or at some of their sales uh, when they have sales around in the area so we've moved to another part of the zoo um we're still kind of near the, the python exhibit we're over here at the viewing area of the tiger exhibit across the pathway and I wanted to highlight three of these palm trees that we have here. Um, this one right here is uh, Hydrostele uh, longispatha. It's a really, really pretty palm tree um, from uh, Papua New Guinea. And uh, this is one of the things that we're really wanting to, excited to try. I've been wanting to get one to grow here for a while. Um, and, you know, again, we're, we're trialing these things to see how well they do here. Uh, this one's proven to be a fairly fast grower and it's gotten fairly established uh, quickly. Um, and, you know, we're trying to show people more unique specimens that you wouldn't normally find in our, uh, you know, in the nursery trade, so to speak. So, again, it's going to be more of a uh, collector's palm. You'll find them, just collectors grow them and stuff like that. You'll be able to find it online. Um, if, you know, if you look around and do some digging, you'll be able to uh, find these pretty readily. So, next one we want to move down to right here is our... This particular palm tree, it's a uh, Sertostachys lori. I'm sorry, it doesn't have a common name. I can't tell you that. So um, it's another interesting one from Papua New Guinea. Uh, again, once it gets established, it's a very fast grower. And uh, we're happy to trial that out. Once it, it produces a, a new leaf, it gets a little bit of a red flush on it. So it adds a little bit of an interesting thing. This one's kind of faded. This leaf actually opened about uh, three or four weeks ago. So um, they will actually get going pretty quickly so again we don't know how well it's going to do here there's some other ones in uh, other gardens that are doing really well and we're just kind of trial it uh, trialing it here so interesting to see how it turns out see if it grows well for us so far it's went through the winter time fantastically and then finally in this area this is our uh another palm i want to talk about this is uh called the foxy lady palm this is an actual hybrid that was created in horticulture. So what that means is two totally different uh, palm trees uh, cross-pollinated one another and we got this, the progeny came out uh, like this. Now this is a, a cross from the very common Montgomery palm, uh, Vicia aracena, that is used here in the landscape and also the foxtail palm, which is Woodyetia bifurcata. And that is also a very common landscape palm. Uh, uh, palm here in southwest Florida. So these two, this is a, a, a hybrid between the two. So if you see, it's kind of, it looks a little bit like both of them. Also, this is a particular form is they can be variegated. So if you get the variegation, which is the white creamy leaves right there, um, that's another trait of, uh, of this particular palm tree. And they're extremely fast growing. This is one of the fastest growing palm trees that we've got. Um, since we it's probably doubled or tripled in size in the last like four or five months since we put it in the ground it's gone really really fast and i would suspect by the end of the uh end of the growing season next week it probably will be taller than the exhibit fence behind me so 
we're going to move over to another side uh, another area of the zoo and talk about some more palm trees well we moved over here to uh, right across from our bear exhibit and i wanted to take a, a little time to talk about our uh, historic specimens that we have here on ground so people aren't familiar with the property it was originally developed back in the 1920s um, by dr henry nairling um, and then after he had the land then julius flashman came in so that was in the 50s, and then the Tetzloffs took over in the 60s and 70s. So we have what we call different eras here. We have our historic specimen markers that we talk about here. Uh, this particular palm tree is was planted during the Henry Nerly era. Um, this is our native uh, Cocotrinax argentata, or Florida silver palm. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty old specimen, so we're kind of proud of these and try to make sure that we take extra special care of some of our older specimens. Um, so it's a very interesting tree. Um, occurs kind of all over the the Caribbean basin. However, it's, it's native to here, the Florida Keys, and also um, the uh, uh, in Southeast Florida in uh, Miami and Dade County. All right. Well, we've moved over here to uh, an area between our uh, tiger exhibit and our alligator bay exhibit. We affectionately call this the tiger bed because it's kind of close by the tigers. Um, I want to talk about the three palm trees you see around me right now. Um, this particular palm tree is the ruffled fan palm or Vanuatu fan palm. Comes from Vanuatu in the Southwest Pacific um, Islands. is a really, really pretty palm tree. Great for shade, um, a shade garden. Doesn't get particularly big. This is probably about as wide as the plant will get. It will eventually get taller um, as it grows up. It's done really, really well for us um, um, as far as like very little, uh, uh, you know, very little cultural uh, requirements I should say um, and does well would be a great palm for inside uh, if you want to grow it for inside the uh, inside your home uh, for uh, home use if you live further north I know a lot of people do grow these in it and these are becoming more readily available in the trade so you should be able to find these around uh, pretty easily um, another one I want to talk about right here is this one particular one is called uh, Calyptrocalyx species bolac. Again, I'm sorry, it doesn't have a common name on it because it's a, a fairly interesting one for uh, um, in, the, in the horticulture trade or science. Um, what, what is unique about this particular palm tree is that when it puts out a new, uh, new growth, the new growth on this uh, tree is, or palm tree is uh, like a bright red. It's a really, really pretty palm tree. So when it puts out new growth, has that new uh, new red flush on it and adds a little bit of color to the landscape. And then finally, I'm gonna talk about this is my own personal favorite if I have one uh, here on uh, Zoo Grounds. This particular palm tree is called Hydrocele Dransfieldii it, or Ombrush Palm. It's from Biak Island uh, off the coast of Papua New Guinea. Um, great for uh, shade, uh, a shade garden or a really protected spot will take a little bit of sunlight, but doesn't like a whole lot. So limit that. Again, uh, more of a collector's palm, but I just it's a fantastic palm tree with the different uh, size leaflets and the leaves that you get on the characteristic. So this is definitely probably my favorite palm tree specimen that we have here on grounds. We moved around over here to our Alligator Bay picnic area, uh, right across uh, the end of Alligator Bay in our backyard habitat slash butterfly garden. Uh, the palm we want to highlight over here is the Marquesas palm, or Pelagodoxa henryana. It's an endangered palm tree from uh, the Marquesas Islands. It's, just, it's in the middle of the Pacific, just north of Tahiti in French Polynesia. It has these absolutely wonderful bifid leaves on it. Really, really striking specimen. Um, gets a silver to the undersides of the leaf. Uh, you can see that. It's a, it's a unique, another unique uh, uh, aspect about this palm tree. You will be able to find them hopefully with, uh, you know, as more and more become available, it's still a collector's item palm. But you can find them there around, again, Pelagodoxa henryana or the Marquesas palm. Again, one of our unique things that we've, has grown very well for us here. Went through Irma and went through a lot of other things um, and hasn't really skipped the beat. Wanted to talk to you another area that we've moved over to is right outside our Safari Canyon exit. Um, really interesting palm tree here uh it's uh, called macaw palm or iphanes minima uh, and it's actually a really really gorgeous palm tree 
uh, when grown. However, you'll also notice the trunk and the lower leaf spine, uh, leaf bases are covered with spines. As we like to say, it's armed to the teeth. And this is designed to keep uh, animals from browsing on them or eating them um, or generally destroying the plant. Um, and this is uh, well, just another way that plants have adaptations to be able to survive and things that they, you know, can do. Again, adds to me, adds a sense of danger when you're working around the plant, just because you have to notice that there's always spines and be ready for it. If you back into it or get a little too close, it'll let you know. But again, a really, really gorgeous palm tree, uh, Iphanese minima or the macaw palm. Okay, we moved over here to our canyon exit, uh, our canyon's edge area. What we do is a bed. It's got some uh, picnic tables in the area. It's a little more shaded bed, um, as you can tell here. Another palm tree I wanted to highlight is one of our staff favorites it's called the flamethrower palm. Um, this palm tree, uh, Camberonia macrocarpa, comes from the uh, island of New Caledonia, which is off the northeast coast of Australia, and is apparently there it is the national tree of New Caledonia. What happens, we call it the flamethrower palm, is when this new leaf spear opens up, it is a bright red, and it stands out, and you can see it from a long way away. It's a fantastic, gorgeous palm tree. Really easy to grow here in Southwest Florida. Um, probably should be grown a lot more. Um, they're starting to become more and more available. Um, they're a little on the slow side as far as growing, but they're well worth the grow here. Um, again, flamethrower palm, Cameronia macrocarpa from New Caledonia. And finally, uh, we've moved out here to our parking lot area. Um, and, you know, with Hurricane Irma, uh, the damage to the inside the park was very substantial and it was no different than outside, outside here in the parking lot. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking the time and the opportunity to be able to put in interesting uh, palm trees that people should be growing uh, in their own gardens and kind of giving people ideas of what other new stuff that can be grown other than the foxtail palms that we were replacing um, that succumbed to Hurricane Irma. So what we're uh, talking about right here, this is the Carpoxylon palm or Carpoxylon macrospermum. It's from Vanuatu. Um, it's proving to be a really, really good palm tree for South Florida and especially in Southwest Florida. Um, grows very, fa uh, very fast. We prefer shade early um, in the day, uh, early in its, excuse me, early when it's a seedling. And then as it gets larger, it will take full sun. This one takes full sun. It's doing fantastic. Um, and what's really cool and unique is there's a monster specimen of this down on 3rd Street South, just down from Tommy Bahamas, um, if you're down there looking for it. Uh, it is probably the largest one in the continental United States. It's about 30, 25 to 30 feet tall. It's a fantastic specimen. Again, Carpoxylon uh, palm or Carpoxylon macrospermum, really uh, palm we're really high on and wanting to trial this here out in our parking lot. Well, we've moved further down the walkway, and, this, and what we're doing this for is this is the future walkway um, going into the zoo. And one of the unique things we're trying to create here is a palmetum that everybody can come out and enjoy outside the zoo. So eventually we'll be going down and replacing and putting in more unique palms uh, down the line for future. This is another one that we just put in. It's uh, related to our native sable palm or sable palmetto, everybody's wondering. This one is sable mauritiformis comes from uh, the southern Leeward Islands all the way into northern South America and does really really well here um, pretty tough plant and you know again we're trialing these out here in our uh, palm walkway um, that will eventually like I said will be the the new entrance to the zoo uh, when we get ready to develop that so just wanted to say thanks for uh, coming along on the tour with us uh, of the palm trees if you have any questions feel free to email me at darylwindham at naplezoo.org or if you want to have any other questions you can call us email us shoot us a, uh, a question on facebook and thanks for joining along have a good day